Did you know that 90% of the sex advice articles and videos that I see are complete rubbish? It, you know, it seems like every day I walk past a news agency and there's a men's mag saying, here's the magical thrist, hip thrusting motion you need to do or the, 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 the tongue pattern you need to do that's going to make you think you're a king in bed. And it's rubbish. It's, that, that's not what constitutes incredible sex. Today, I'm going to share with you the five keys to being incredible at bed that every man needs to know. I have a question for you. What is the most erotically charged part of a woman's body? Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's not her boobs, it's not a juicy lady bits or her butt. Okay, it's her mind. And this is, this is a little bit of a trick question because the most erotically charged part of a man's body is also his mind. And most, many men don't even realize this. You see, when it comes to a sexual encounter with a woman, 80% of her feelings about it, you know, 80% of, of her thoughts about was this a great sex session, was this guy an amazing lover, is all about what happened up here and not about what happened down around here. There is a reason why we call great sex mind-blowing and not vagina or penis-blowing. Now, before I go into these five keys, what I want to tell you is this. This is a very advanced topic. If you're watching and you're still currently struggling to generate good conversation, to read women's basic body language, to know if she's liking you or not liking you, and you're not yet able to sort of adapt to different types of interactions with women, then by all means enjoy this video. But keep in mind, you're not going to be able to use it yet. You know, keep it up here. Keep it in your mind. Maybe make this an interesting conversation topic with women when you're trying to learn to sexually escalate. But yeah, this is really advanced stuff. And if you want to use this, you're going to have to be at an advanced level. So the first key that you need to know is this. When a woman feels sexy, she feels sexual, right? So... When the sexier woman woman feels, the hornier she is. The sexier woman feels, the more erotically charged she is. And there is an art form to making a woman feel sexy. Now, there's a good and a bad way to go about this. You know, the bad way is what I call horny desperate teenager. It's like it's like, oh my god, you're so sexy. Oh my god, oh my god, I can't believe this is gonna happen. Oh, I've been lusting after you for ages. Um, that's that's kind of like uh, it can be flattering. Um. It could be called cute, but it's hardly what we call sexy. The way that you want to make a woman feel desired, the way that you want to make her feel sexy is, is what I call barely caged beast. So a really great uh, example of this is if you've seen the movie Twilight. <laughs> now, bear with me for a second because it was a crap movie. But in Twilight, Edward, one of the lead characters who, who's a vampire, meets this girl, Bella, and he is so... He is so attracted by her scent, her smell, that he just he, he is just seconds off, like, devouring her. Now, this is a nice metaphor for sexual devouring, you know, but in this movie, he's a vampire who wants to eat her. But that, that feeling of that barely chained beast that can, can just barely control himself around her is at the key of what women want to feel from a man. That's why it's in Twilight. That's why so many women like this movie, is it, is it plugs into this very keen feature that women have so what you want to do is what you want to portray to women is oh you're driving me nuts woman god damn it <clears throat> it's that it's that 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 you know i am i am i'm holding on here but but you're making it really difficult you know it's not the needy oh my god oh my god oh my god it's it's grr. it's that really deep kind of like crazy monstrous desire that you, you is caged that she doesn't need to be scared of but it's there and she can feel it that's sexy um, and the way that I'll do that, the way that I'll portray this to women in interactions could be a number of things, you know, it can be a woman's talking to me and I'll say, hey, can I just stop you for a second? When you're explaining this to me, can you, you know, not lean over so much because I'm getting really distracted and, and my mind is just going crazy, uh, you know, to make you out like I, I can't, you know, I'm getting distracted by a body. I might say to her, um, you know, things might be getting hot and heavy and I might say to her, you know, I, I've been looking at your ass in that dress all night and it's been driving me oh, crazy. Or I might say to her, you know, we might be having a conversation about something sexual in nature. It's getting a little bit heated, the kind of sexual escalation conversation here. And I might say to her, you know what? 
we got to stop because I'm going to, you know, if this conversation keeps going on, I, I, I'm not going to make any apologies for what I'm going to do because I'm going to go crazy. And I'll say these things because what they're doing is they're expressing an underlying monster inside that wants to get unleashed. And the reason that monster's going so crazy is because I desire her. And if you can key into that really well, you're making her feel desired. And by making her feel desired, you're making her feel excited sexually. Key number two is to understand anticipation. I am a huge fan of creating oodles and oodles of sexual anticipation. A great example <laughs> of sexual anticipation that I've used a lot, and I've actually done a video on it, um, is, 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 is creating what I call a sex box. And this is something that I've done not the first time that I sleep with a woman, usually second or third time. I'll show up on a date with her and I'll just have this box. And inside the box will be a bunch of sort of little goodies. There'll be sort of a blindfold and headphones and, and a feather, some chocolate, you know, little bits and pieces like textured things that I can tease her body with. But she doesn't get to see inside the box. So I just show up at this dinner date with a little box locked and I place a clink on the table and it makes this heavy kind of metallic noise. And she'll say to me, what's in the box? And I'll say, well, it's just something for a little later. We don't need to talk about it now though. Let's just enjoy our dinner. So throughout the whole date, there's this box sitting on the table with something inside. She's pretty sure it's sexual in nature, but she doesn't know what it is. Her mind starts to go at a million miles an hour. What could be inside this box? What's he got planned for me? What's going on? And that's so powerful because our imaginations, our erotic sexual imaginations are so much more powerful than, 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 than anything that happens in the real world. So you're letting her mind go, go on, on crazy the whole date. And it's winding her up into this, this crazy sexual lather. You know, the good sex has begun long before you're in the bedroom together. You know, other ways that you can create anticipation that I recommend it is to, you know, have conversations about, you know, sexual preferences, about, you know, one conversation, for example, I like to have with women would be, you know, I, I, I find it interesting that a lot of people feel a lot of shame around sex. You know, I think that sex is something that's supposed to be enjoyed. You know, I think, I think a lot of women, especially I feel bad for women because women are often taught to be ashamed of sex and sex is meant to be just crazy and animalistic, you know, and intense. And, you know, I'll start to talk, I'll start this conversation about my thoughts about sex and what sex should be and what good sex is. And again, yes, I know this is an advanced topic, but this is what I do. And by doing this, I create anticipation in her head of what kind of sex I want to have. <laughs> and she can start to picture this as I talk about it. And this is the kind of anticipation stuff that's hugely powerful to creating a potent sexual experience. Number three is something that you've heard a lot about and you've probably not understood it appropriately, and that's foreplay. You know, a lot of guys, when they think of foreplay, they think of this thing they've got to do for women <laughs> to get women in the mood so that women will put out. But I'm here to tell you this right now. If that's the way you think about foreplay, then I'm about to give you the greatest sexual gift anyone has given you in a totally non-gay way. You're welcome. The, the reason is this. Foreplay is amazing for guys too. I don't care who you are. The sad thing is that we grew up in a society where guys kind of think, you know, there's a lot of, it starts with masturbation and trying to have quick masturbation sessions and Male sexuality is very heavily focused on just the tactile, what we can see and touch right now. A lot of male sexuality isn't focused too heavily up here. But oh my God, if you start engaging in long sessions of just touch and being highly aroused, like neck kissing and biting or playing with like textures and sensations and hot and cold and all sorts of different foreplay techniques, you at the same time are getting so overwhelmingly like horny and sexual and turned on that by the time you have sex, you are just ravenous. You are like everything is heightened. What you thought was good sex that you were having before if you don't engage in much foreplay for you personally. Forget about her for a second. Your experience with sex has just magnified tenfold. So yeah, foreplay is a really, really big thing. But there's more to it because I know that a lot of guys are very sensitive about how long they can last in bed. And actually, most guys, the average guy, doesn't last very long once penetration's actually started. You know, we're talking in the area of minutes, not in the area of hours. 
And you will often hear about women saying that they want sex to last longer. And for a lot of the time, in a lot of ways, I'll go into this in more detail later, but when women talk about a long sex session, they're not talking about a long session of penetration. Most aren't. Um, you know, for most women, if, if you're having sex, like actual penetrative sex for like an hour, things are getting numb. Things are getting sore. Um, sex just isn't so enjoyable anymore. I know that there are exceptions to that rule and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that, but mostly that's an exception. When women talk about long lovemaking sessions, they're talking about sessions involving lots of foreplay. You know, they're talking about sessions involving just long durations of being extremely, hugely turned on, you know, sexually intimate without sort of, you know, orgasm and coming, things happening like that. That's what most women, a large majority of women are looking for and talking about. So yeah, you know, you don't need to feel so insecure about that stuff. And if you really do have a, a problem with, by the way, premature ejaculation, you know, just learn to look after it, learn to go down on women really effectively. You know, you don't just have to, it doesn't all have to be about like penetrative sex. The fourth key, guys, is to learn to be adaptive to every new woman. I kind of mentioned in the third point that most women don't want like hours and hours of actual penetration, and some do. Every woman is going to be extremely different in her tastes. I mean, there are commonalities with women, um, but, you know, most of the time, you know, some women are going to like aggressive just aggressive touch. You know, some women just want to be thrown around and, and just slammed, you know, so to speak, and just aggressively just handled, manhandled. And, and you know, I think most women want that from time to time. Um, not every time. You know, other women are very much focused on, on, on tactile, soft, sensual sex. You know, um, being caressed, being, being lightly touched, being nibbled at, being played with. And it's a very, very different type of encounter. And Again, some women will want something, you know, soft and sensual one day and something aggressive the next. But what makes a really amazing lover is knowing how to be adaptable, knowing how to read where she's at, knowing how to read what she wants sexually from you as a man. Um, that goes a huge, huge way. But, you know, there's more even than that than just reading a woman. It's also knowing, being able to read her signals, you know. If you're doing something to a woman and she's trying to push you back or slow you down or get you to do something different, how are you reading that appropriately? You know, are you watching how she's trying to make love with you? You know, is she trying to be aggressive and, and like you know, monkey sex with you? Or is she trying to be sensual and soft? Read that, reciprocate that a little bit. Because what she's doing is she's trying to have sex with you the way she wants you to have sex with her. So how effectively are you reading that? And that is really 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 critical mark if you can read women well sexually and it's not hard um you just need to be a little bit sensitive you need to stop trying so hard to perform stop trying so hard to show off in bed and i think a lot of men get so caught up with that that they shoot themselves in the foot they ensure that they're not that great by trying so damn hard to show off um you know the other area where guys get caught terribly is when a woman tries to tell you what she wants oh my god women <laughs> Oh, if you meet a woman who, who will say, hey, I want you to do this and I like this. I don't like it when you do that. Slow down here, speed up there. That isn't a criticism, guys. That's not her saying you're not a bad, you're not a good lover. Um, a lot of guys actually create situations where women don't want to see them again because they don't listen to what they want. Guys take all this feedback as criticism to the lovemaking and, and they don't listen very well or they get agitated. They spoil a the moment because guys take it all too personally. A woman who's willing to tell you what, gets, what turns her on, what gets her off, is a godsend. You want women like that. <laughs> you want more women to tell you what they want so you know exactly how to give it to them. Yeah, it's, it's not a criticism. It's you being adaptive. It's you learning what she wants. You know, something that every woman agrees and every man who has a lot of success with women agrees with as well the first time you sleep with a woman is, is average, usually. Um, whatever you experience the first time you and a woman sleep together, it's only going to get three, four, five times better as you get to know each other, as you learn to adapt to each other's needs. So the quicker you can do that, the more amazing a lover she's going to think you are in a shorter period of time. And, you know, if you get a bit of experience under your belt, you really can read a woman so well that her first experience with you, her feelings like, oh my God, we just clicked. That was so hot. We just, we were on the same level the whole way through. Oh, it's so rare to meet a guy who's on my, who's on my level sexually. And all you're doing is just being more adaptive than the next guy. Lastly, and this shouldn't come as a surprise to you, but she should come first. 
there's a bit I want to say about this. And the first is the obvious. Yeah, sex is about both of you enjoying yourselves. Sex is about... Some guys are very selfish sexually, and that's never a good thing. Some women are selfish sexually, and that's also never a good thing. But that's not the topic of today's video. Don't be selfish in bed. Like, take the time to find out what she likes. Take the time to... Not in a needy way, mind you. Not, do you like this? Is this okay? Don't do that crap. But just take the time, as I said above, to try to be sensitive to what she wants and needs. Take the time to try to make her orgasm. But there's a catch to this. Um, you can try too hard. You can be so obsessed with trying to make her orgasm that you've lost sight of the fact that she's not able to. And lots of women can't. You know, many women, close to most, I believe most, can't orgasm during penetrative sex. <laughs> um, a lot of women find that very difficult for a myriad reasons. Um, but there's also other things. Some women can't orgasm at all, but they still really enjoy sex. Other women can orgasm, but it's really hard to do with a new partner. You know, it's, it's, it's quite tricky for women emotionally, some, many women, to orgasm. And so if it's the first time, the first experience, first few experiences, it can be tough. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of expectation. You don't really know the way around each other's bodies 100% yet. But a woman can have an incredible sexual experience with a guy. And to the point where she wants to rave to her friends about it without her actually orgasming. Um... It doesn't come up in conversation. If one woman says, oh my God, I had such an amazing night with this guy. She, her friend never says, did you orgasm? You know, it's not a part of it. Yes, women want to reach that point. Of course, the release is incredible. But the experience for a woman isn't, isn't predicated on that outcome. So don't see your prowess, your ability as a man to be completely dependent on that. If she wants you to stop, if she just wants you to come, go for it. Uh, you know, don't put the pressure on her to feel like she has to orgasm. If you do that, you're going to create a woman who, who fakes it. And if you create a woman who fakes orgasms, you're never going to be able to please her properly anyway. So don't bother going down that path, guys. But yeah, she should come first if she can. So guys, those are the five keys to being an amazing lover. To absolutely blowing a woman's mind in bed. If you'd like to learn more about sexual escalation, if you'd like to learn more about being an incredible lover, then I absolutely recommend you download my audiobook, Sincere Seduction. I've put a link right here. Go ahead and download that right now. Otherwise, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'm Damien Dika, and I look forward to seeing you in my future videos.